Hi, everybody. Merry day after Christmas, or Boxing Day as they call it. I'm so glad you guys could join me. Um, today, we're going to talk about CBD, cannabidiol, um, and CBD products such as CBD oil, why it's different from hemp oil, um, pain creams that are used with CBD in it. And I really want this to be interactive. So if you have any questions, please write them in the comments and I will do my best to get every one of them before we're done here. So CBD stands for cannabidiol. And it is a constituent, which means it's a part of the hemp plant. The hemp plant is a cousin of the marijuana plant. They're both in the cannabis family, but they are not the same plant. They're just in the same botanical family together. The biggest difference between the hemp plant and the marijuana plant is that marijuana growers tend to um, grow the plant to have higher levels of THC, which is the part of the plant that makes you get high, gives you that, um, that feeling that some of us know very well. Hi, Michael Coughlin. Good to see you. Um, the hemp plant, on the other hand, has been cultivated to have smaller and smaller amounts of THC in it. The government has said that if the level of THC is at 0.3% or less, then that is the level at which you won't get high and it is therefore legal. Now, hi Don, good to see you. Don't forget that if you guys have questions, just type them in the comments. That's what I'm here for. We're talking about the difference between hemp and marijuana. Last week on Thursday, the president signed the farm bill. Part of this bill talks about the classification of hemp plants. It's been rather confusing for a number of years because different jurisdictions around the country have different rules about it. So some places say it's illegal, some places say it's e illegal. What this farm bill did was to take hemp and hemp products out of the jurisdiction of being a controlled substance as long as it has the 0.3% or less of THC in that hemp product. Hi, Don. It's um, not illegal in this country anymore. They're moving hemp into the category of a plant product rather than a drug product. And this is good news on a lot of levels. Um, I know that one of the main reasons this bill went through with the hemp was because a lot of farmers who used to grow tobacco products are not growing them as much anymore. There's not as much demand for tobacco anymore, and they need a replacement crop. Well, hemp is a great replacement crop. Hi, Lisa. Good to see you. So that is one of the reasons it's moving in that direction. Hi, Steve. An interesting development that happened right after the president signed the Farm Bill last Thursday is that the FDA came out and they said, you know what? Hemp's not all as bad as we thought it was. This CBD stuff, yeah, it's generally regarded as safe and, and we think we're going to consider making it legal in dietary supplements and food. So look for that coming in the future where there's going to be CBD infused food. So let's go back to what CBD is itself. CBD stands for cannabidiol. It's a constituent of the hemp and also of the marijuana plants. And it is 
what our bodies need. We have what is called an endocannabidiol system. This system has been largely unknown. It was actually discovered just about 25 or so years ago. And it's part of the central nervous system and the immune system. And what it is, is it's receptors on our cells in those systems. These receptors make it very easy for the CBD to latch onto the cell. And then the cell can intake the CBD and use it. So that's what makes it um, very beneficial to the human body. And you're right, Don, it does make a strong rope. There are a whole lot of uses for hemp. So it's great that it's coming back. It, it was outlawed in this country in 1937, um, basically because one guy who was the head of the organization that was the precursor of the DEA, he decided that he needed more illegal items to monitor than the ones that he currently had. So he lobbied Congress and they decided that they would outlaw hemp and marijuana as well as cocaine. So before that happened, this country grew a lot of hemp. I mean, you can go back to the early 1600s when the settlers first got here, they were growing hemp. In fact, Thomas Jefferson wrote a draft of the Declaration of Independence on paper made from hemp. So hemp has a lot of uses. Our livestock used to forage on feral hemp. So the cows, the, the pigs, the sheep, they would eat the hemp. The hemp would then be in their bodies. If we would eat the meat from that animal or drink their milk or you know the cheese made from that milk, then the CBD would get into our bodies. And so we were consuming it without even really trying to. Hi, Patty, good to see you. But now that, or after it was outlawed in 1937, they started giving other types of food to the livestock to eat, um, stuff that they don't normally eat, like grains, uh, such as corn, and then eventually it became GMO corn and other grains. And of course, that gets passed into our bodies as we consume the products from these animals, whether it's the meat or the milk. Anyway, I'm very excited that the Farm Bill has passed and that CBD is legalized in this country everywhere. I know there are still pockets around the country that there are areas that say, well, we're not quite so sure. But more and more states and jurisdictions are coming on board with it. So what does CBD do for you? That's one of the main questions I get. And it, it almost sounds funny because it seems like CBD is good for just about everything. Hi, Mary, good to see you. Um, most people tend to use CBD for anxiety issues, for sleep issues, for pain, um, also for energy. I found that it gives me a lot of energy during the day, and yet I sleep great at night. It doesn't keep me up at night. It's kind of an oxymoron. But um, it has a lot of uses in neurological things. There's, if you go to PubMed, that is the federal government's website that makes available all sorts of medical studies so that we, the general public, can understand what's going on. And if you just type in cannabidiol, which is the full name for CBD, you're going to find over 24,000 different studies. And I know now that the farm bill has passed, it's going to explode from there. So if you want to get more specific, you can type in cannabidiol, the plus sign, and then cancer or Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, anything that you're really interested in learning about. 
but the studies that are out there show that it works very well for just about everything that ails us. Another question that a lot of people seem to have about CBD is how much should I take? And this is where it gets a little confusing because we've been groomed really since we were born by the pharmaceutical industry to experience a symptom, take a drug. And when you take that drug, you take a specific amount that your doctor tells you to take or it's written on the label, and you take it at a certain time of day. Some drugs work better at different times of day than others. CBD does not work like that, not at all. It's a very individualized thing. And because it's a plant product and not a manufactured drug, each crop is going to be slightly different. So each bottle you get is going to work slightly differently. So it does take a little bit of patience and a change in your expectations that it's no longer, hi Dinah, it's no longer a, oh, I have a pain in my, I turned my ankle, so my ankle hurts, so I need to take some ibuprofen or uh, something else for the pain. It's not like that. It's something that you have to experiment with. Many people like to start with one or two drops per day, and you always want to put it under your tongue. What the studies have found is that CBD tends to work best when it's combined with a carrier oil. Um, an MCT oil, medium chain triglyceride, such as a fractionated coconut oil, is a great type of carrier oil. You do want to be very careful when you're buying a CBD product that you get a high quality carrier oil. You don't want to have a vegetable oil like a canola oil or corn oil, anything like that. So anyway, what the studies have shown is that when you combine the CBD with a high quality carrier oil, your body takes it up almost instantly. When you put it sublingually under the tongue, it absorbs right into the bloodstream. What I do is I just put a little bit under my tongue, about 30 seconds later, I swallow it. If you find that the taste is not to your liking, just chase it with something or take a bite of something. It's not going to affect its effectiveness if you do that. Okay, so we're talking about dosing. Um, the FDA at this point does not like us to say, you specific person need to take this number of drops this many times a day at this time of day. They just, they, they don't like that because that's prescribing and that's what doctors do. I'm not a doctor. Most of us who are using the CBD are not doctors. But at the same time, the FDA says, well, you have to have some usage instructions or some dosing instructions on the label. So it's uh, a little bit strange that way. Um, let's see, I've got some comments here, but I'm not seeing them. Okay, there we go. Gotcha. No questions yet, just highs. So, um, the best way to start with CBD, there's two recommended ways. One is where you take a drop or two per day. I usually take it with my first meal of the day because I do intermittent fasting that's close to noon, but if you want to do it at six o'clock or eight o'clock in the morning, hey, you need to experiment on what's best for you. So you can take one or two drops a day and then every day you just see how you're doing. Did you notice anything different that day? Maybe increase another drop or two. For me, I noticed a difference within two days. I noticed that I was having more energy throughout the day and I was sleeping really well at night. And for me, as someone who's been dealing with autoimmune disorders for decades, that is huge, I mean huge. I was thinking that maybe the thyroid medication I was taking wasn't working well, it wasn't at the right dosage because I was 
always, always tired. But I started using the CBD oil and the fatigue was gone. So those were the first things I noticed. But I used the second method to get started. Um, you can call it front loading or overloading, however you want to look at it as. But I decided to take what I thought was going to be my full dose. Now, I have an article on my website that has a table on it that does show you some dosing guidelines. Uh, it has to do with how much you weigh, what your symptoms are, that type of thing. But I thought, mm, half a dropper full sounds like it's going to be a good thing for me. So I started day one half dropper. I'm still on half dropper a day. It seems to be the best for me. I have experimented with taking a little bit more, taking a little bit less, maybe taking a quarter of a dropper in the morning and a quarter in the middle of the afternoon. For me, I always came back to a half a dropper at my first meal, which is at about noontime for me. So I do recommend that you just have to play around with it. Um, hi, everybody who joined. Please know that you can type in any questions that you have, and I will do my best to get to everybody's questions. So that's, that's about dosing. Um, for the most part, I would say whatever you see on the label, disregard. Again, they have to put something on the label, but yet they're told they really can't tell people how much to take. So take it with a grain of salt and realize that this is you figuring out how a natural product is going to work in your body best. And it's going to change, too. You're not the same in your chemical composition from day to day, from week to week, from year to year. We grow and we change. Things happen in our bodies. We may get attacked by a virus sometimes. Things happen to us. We may go through a period of intense stress in our life due to whatever. So let your body guide you, um, let God guide you and show you what it is that you need to be taking for you. Okay, so we've talked about dosing. We've talked about what CBD is, what conditions it's good for. We've talked about the endocannabinoid system in our bodies. Does anybody else have another subject that they would like me to cover? Um, I want to talk about quality, that's for sure. The quality of the CBD that you use is incredibly important. I tried a CBD oil at the beginning of this year, 2018, and I got sick almost instantly. And then I looked at the label, which I probably should have done first, but there were additives. They had added flavorings. They had added sweeteners. Um, it didn't really say what the carrier oil was. So those things together, my body was just like, no, we don't like this. So when I did my my research to start marketing CBD products, I wanted to make sure that I had a really quality project product. Um, I found a company that's based in Tennessee, and you do want to make sure that you get a U.S.-based product. The uh, CBD products that come from Europe, they grow their CBD mostly for the seed, and you're just not going to get as much out of the seed as you would out of the stalks and the leaves and the whole plant. So you want a whole plant product and absolutely, positively, never ever buy anything that came from China. That's probably good advice for almost everything. Anyway, um, so you want a high quality product. You want to make sure that it, it's made in the USA. So this product is born and uh, manufactured in Tennessee. And I lived in Tennessee for about 12 years. I know the area that, that it's grown in. And the most exciting news that I have that I learned just the other day is that 
the lab where the oil is extracted from the plant and actually manufactured. This lab is associated with the University of Tennessee, and they're just now completing a 22,000 square foot addition to their facility, and they are poised to become the very first FDA approved manufacturer of CBD products in the United States. So I'm very excited about that to be able to to put that on my label. Oh, and talking about labels, I don't know if you guys have ever seen my label, but I've had the product labeled to my business, which is called 3JN2 Wellness. This is the preliminary label. If you've bought oil for me in the last month or so, this is what you've seen. But I've been working with the company to get a new label. And you see it's got my logo on it and the picture of me. And so that's really exciting. So we've been working hard on that for a while. So quality, you want to make sure you get a product that's from the United States. You want to make sure you get a product with a quality carrier oil. You also want to make sure that there are no additives. As I mentioned, that one product that I did try, it had some flavorings added to it. It had stevia added to it. And while I don't normally have a problem with stevia, for whatever reason, this, this oil didn't didn't sit well with my body. So you want to make sure that it's pure. Now, I know that the company that um, I get my oils from, they also have a 900 milligram version that has some essential oils added to it. And that's mostly for flavor. And I actually tried a taste test between the 1,000 milligram oil that this is with no extra additives and the um, 900 milligram with the essential oils and I honestly couldn't taste a difference in the flavor but I'm a big user of essential oils they're all over me and inhaling it day and night so it may be that I my body just couldn't tell the difference but um, when you're adding something to a natural product like this You've got to ask why. Why are we adding something to this? I believe that when God makes, he puts them together in a certain way for a reason. And that when we use things, all of those parts together, that they work best in our bodies. And that's what's called a full spectrum product. It has all of the parts in it. So when you start adding stuff to that, well, how is that going to change the chemical nature of the product? And how is it going to interact in my body? I don't know. And then if you start pulling stuff out of it, again, how is it going to respond? Now, a lot of people use CBD without any THC in it. And I can completely understand that if you're in a job where you may be randomly drug tested. Because even at the legal limit of 0.3% THC, there is a possibility that that could show up on a drug test. But again, since the Farm Bill is passed and CBD products with 0.3% of THC or less are perfectly legal in this country, the drug testing is going to have to change. So for now, there are products available without THC. It's not going to be as beneficial as those with THC. Again, the full spectrum being every different part of it together is what you want. But if you need to do that because you have a drug testing policy where you work, well, the way I look at it is a little bit of CBD is better than no CBD. And that's what my husband has to do. He works at a job where they do random drug testing, so he uses a no THC product. Hopefully that will not have to be the case for anybody for very much longer in this country. So hey guys, you are all really, really quiet. Can I answer any questions for you? Uh, we've talked about 
quality of it, getting a full spectrum product, making sure there is a quality carrier oil, um, making sure there aren't any additives, especially you want to look at things like propylene glycol. I mean, really, you don't need that in your body. But what you're going to find is a difference on the price sticker. If they're adulterating it, if they're cutting it with something else in order to make it go farther, they're going to be able to lower the price. So you've got to look at what you're buying and make sure you're getting something as God designed for our bodies to have. Uh, let's see, what else can I tell you about CBD? Oh, well, the background of CBD in this country. Did you know that CBD has been, not CBD, but hemp, hemp has been grown in this country since the early 1600s? Yeah. It was an all-purpose crop. As somebody mentioned earlier, it makes a very strong rope. It's great to make, to use for paper, not just writing paper, but paper towels and bathroom tissue and that type of thing. So these are all very, very high quality type of products that can come from hemp and hemp grows so quickly that we don't have to continue cutting down our forests where it takes decades to replace the trees. Okay, so we've got hemp that has been grown in this country since the 1600s. Farmers were encouraged to grow it. In fact, for hundreds of years, you could pay your taxes in the United States with hemp. <laughs> what a crazy idea, right? Um, it all turned around, as I mentioned earlier, in 1937 when hemp and hemp products were added to um, the Schedule One of controlled substances in this country. But now that the Farm Bill is passed, that's all going to be behind us. And we can once again reap the benefits of CBD, of cannabidiol, even of the THC, because it does have benefits. When you keep it below 0.3%, then there are benefits to our bodies of the THC. So you can take CBD without being concerned to get about getting high or doing something illegal, knowing that you're putting into your body a product that God designed for our bodies to receive. That's why we have an endocannabinoid system. So I hope you guys have learned some information about this. Um, if you have any other questions, feel free to contact me on Facebook or on my website, 3JN2Wellness.com, or you can just go to carolrundle.com and it'll take you to the same place. My website is having a little hiccup today. Hopefully that'll be fixed soon, but it's still readable. It's just looking a little funky. Anyway, um, CBD oil, I am very, very blessed to be able to bring this to you guys. So I hope you enjoyed this. Have a great evening and a rest of the holiday week. Talk to you later. Bye.